is it a crime? Is it considered a crime or no? Are they getting arrested? Are they taken in or no? And that's a great question. I, I like to talk about this one. Um, no, it is not a crime here in the United States. In some countries, it is. To attempt suicide, it is a crime, but not here. And this is what I tell folks, and I think this is very, very important. You see people suffering from mental illness, and then law enforcement comes out, and that individual is handcuffed, and people get all up in a roar about this. But I want to tell you something that folks need to hear, and what I would do is I would tell the individual in dealing with them when they were over this rail or wherever I'm at on the bridge that especially let's just say over the rail. When you come back over, not if, but when you come back over, I have to place you in handcuffs. And that's only for your safety and our policy. That's all it is. You're not under arrest. You haven't done anything wrong. So most of the time they have not done anything wrong. They don't have a warrant. So if they come back over, I have already discussed it with them. I've never had an issue after discussing it with an individual. Let me get this straight. So I'm on the, the, the individual's on the verge of jumping. I'm on the other side, not back where I'm safe. While I'm on the other side, you tell me I'm gonna bring you over and I'm gonna handcuff you and they agree to it. I said, when you come back over, because they wanna know what happens. Because now if they think that they're in trouble, that just compounds everything. They think if they do come back over, now they're gonna go to jail. Now that's more money, that's time away, the embarrassment and everything else. I'm gonna knock all that down. And so, you know what? Here's what's going to happen. When you come back over, first, I congratulate you and talk with you for a minute. And then I have to place you in handcuffs. That's only because it's our policy. But really, they're in my hands now. I'm responsible for them. So let's say if I didn't put them in handcuffs and I put them in a patrol car and we start driving them down to San Francisco General and we're going 60 miles down the road and they think, you know what? I don't want to do this. I, I really should have jumped or whatever, then boom, now they're free to kick out the window and jump out the car at 60 miles an hour. Whereas if I have them in the handcuffs, I have that time to pull over, at least slow down a lot. So it is all about their safety. But I explained this to them. And since I've been doing that, I never had an issue. Yeah, Kevin, since you've been doing this and you've gone through a few hundred of these, um, do you agree with the current law on what to do after somebody is suicidal? Or would you have to they- change it? Would you change it like they go get checked out and then the people let them go and, and they go about their business? Would you change the uh, approach? Maybe they stay somewhere for a week. Maybe the timeline's got to be longer. What would you say? Because I guess the main thing is, you know, the whole, uh, what what is the word they use for people who go to jail, they get out and they get back in again? Recidivism? Right. So right. How, how often have you seen people who are suicidal they come, they leave, and they come back, and they want to commit the suicide anyways because they didn't get the proper need. They need the proper help they needed, and that does happen. Unfortunately, I would just hope and pray that the individuals looking at them really take this into consideration. They're there for a reason. You know, once in a while we get these folks who know the process, and they're going to go over the rail just because they know we're going to respond, and they'll get three hots and a cot, and out of the cold, and out of the wet, and the rain, and all. But the vast majority of time, these are folks who are suffering greatly. And if they decide to live that day, we get them past this crisis. Boom. We want to get them some help. But it is difficult. You know, there's not a lot of money put into mental health. Um, We need more funding for this, for folks to have access. Sometimes they're waiting two months to get an appointment with a mental health professional. I mean, that's not right. If you're in crisis, we need to get help now you know, and to build this and make this a stronger system. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.